So welcome back to this another lesson in WebGate and we are looking at how to install and provision the WebGate. Very quickly, in the previous lesson, we looked at the WebGate in console. How do they look like in console? And now let's look at what is provisioning, install and provision means. So it's a two step process. First is you provision a WebGate instance in Oracle Access Manager. What, what does that mean is that in the as we saw in the previous screen, you go and create an instance of a WebGate in Oracle Access Manager. So you go to the either and you can do it in one of the two methods. You can go to the console and say, hey, go to the agents and then create the instance or you can run run our edge. So when you do that, everything happens on Oracle Access Manager side. There's nothing happened on the client side, which is your web server. So then what you do once it's done on the Oracle Access Manager side, then you go to the web server side and you install the software called WebGate. Now, as I said earlier, in 11G version of HTTP server, OHS server, you have to install the WebGate and then configure it. Whereas in 12C the or Oracle HTTP server 12C, WebGate is already installed with the Oracle HTTP server and then you need to configure it. In 12C, there is another web tier component called Oracle Traffic Director and both Oracle Traffic Director and Oracle HTTP server has this WebGate pre-installed or uh, pre-installed for you. All you're doing is then configuring it. What does configuration means is the whatever instance that you've created on other side, on OEM side, you create similar thing on the HTTP server side and then you copy whatever artifacts are generated on the Oracle Access Manager side by provisioning in the previous step or the higher step here with that we, created, we looked at just now, that artifacts or those generated copies will be copied from the OEM server and to the WebGate server. We'll see that in activity guide and, and it'll, things will become much more clear when you do one hands-on. So provisioning is the process of creating a WebGate profile in OEM server and you can do it by one of the two methods. One is RREG which is, and within RREG, you have in-band method and out-of-band method. What is in-band? So let's suppose some companies, in some companies, both Oracle Access Manager server, as well as all the web gates or the web servers are managed by the same team. If and this is the case, then you do in-band because you have control of both web server as well as the OEM server. However, if you have out-of-band um, or, or if, the web servers are managed by one team and OEM servers are managed by another team and it's quite common in big companies, then you do this out of band method, which means the web team is going to create a file for you and you are going to then run that file in on the OEM server, generate the artifacts and give that command or generated artifact back to the OEM server. So this is out of band. And as I said earlier, you can also create same thing using OEM console. Now, uh, as I said earlier, the WebGate is pre-installed when with Oracle HTTP Server 12C or Oracle Traffic Director 12C. So uh, when you install WebGate 11G or 12C, similar to the Oracle HTTP Server, WebGate will also have a Oracle home. And in that home, you, or directory, you have WebGate artifacts and then you have Oracle instance. So once we install the Oracle WebGate, we have, I'm going to show you how does Oracle Home look like. Once Oracle Home is installed or WebGate is installed, when you configure the WebGate, it's going to create an instance directory, but specific to the WebGate. So earlier in HTTP server, in separate module of Oracle HTTP server, we saw how it get created or instance get created uh, for HTTP server. Similar to that, we are going to get a create a instance of WebGate. And in that instance, you will have all the configuration files related to the WebGate. So uh, similar to, again, if it gets quite confusing, don't worry right now. You just work with one WebGate and one WebGate Oracle Home and one WebGate instance. However, within one WebGate of Oracle Home or where you have installed one WebGate, you might create multiple WebGate instances. Why you would do that? On the same way, if you have one Oracle Home of HTTP server with multiple instances of HTTP server, 
again if you're a beginner i would say don't worry about it right now just assume one oracle home with one instance you will do or understand what i'm saying once you have installed and configured one web gate now each web server will be attached to a web gate instance so let's suppose you have two machines and uh, if the http servers are for high availability and everything same then you're going to create just one web gate instance on om server and same web gate will be attached to the two http servers for high availability however let's suppose you have two http servers one for e-business suite and one for oracle uh, obi or other middleware product or custom java application then each web server might be one web server might be for ebs and one web server for uh, for java application or other application that means you have two different http servers so you will be creating two web gate instances in that scenario so there will be a one-to-one -one mapping between the web server instance and the web gate instance now web gate the main configuration file for web gate 11g is file called webgate.com we'll see that that file will be invoked or be included in httpd.com file in ebusiness suite um, there is a, another file called oracle underscore apache so in ebusiness suite httpd.conf will have a, another configuration file called oracle underscore apache and then oracle underscore apache will then in turn call webgate.com we'll see that when we look at the ebs integration ebs integration is slightly different and if you're listening this training in ebusiness suite we'll have a dedicated module on ebusiness suite site for telling all these things if you're listening in outside e-business suite within maybe for Oracle Access Manager or some other integration, then we, you will have to look at, it's a separate course, EBS OEM integration is a separate course unit too. That's where we are able to cover that. So this is about main configuration. We're going to see also when we install and configure. So how do you, how do you install web server? Uh, you basically, um, in order to install the web gate, you will go to the directory, in which you have downloaded the webgate software and then you run some configurations and um, and then install the software and then go and create the instance we are going to look that by looking it into the activity guide so you let's suppose you've created an instance on om side you've installed the webgate software on with http server or whatever your web server then there is a configure command you need to run which basically will connect on the web server web gate side which will connect both the web gate on http server with web gate on the om side it will connect these two and whatever configuration files generated on the om server and we'll see where these files get generated in a minute uh, or in in the next lesson where we look at actually install that at that point we are going to it's going to pull or we are going to copy these files from om server and put it in the webgate instance directory on the web server we'll see all these things and then we'll restart the web server on the server now as i said earlier one more time 12c ohs 12c webgate is already installed so you can skip the first part of installing the webgate server rest all things you still have to do in 12c so let's log into the server and go and look at hands-on onto the server yeah so i'm connecting to the server and or go and download the activity guide so i've already downloaded the activity guide which i'm going to show you so we go to the server and say stage and start the vnc screen on the vnc screen you log in as user so you make sure that whatever user that installed oracle http server or the web server same user should also be the owner of the web gate so how do you install that you go to stage oracle web gate and then say jre lock and so you run run installer it's like any other oracle universal installer now make sure you install the web gate important install the web gate in same middleware home of 11g in which you installed the web gate sorry oracle http server so same oracle home or same middleware home um, where you have http server in the same middleware home you install webgate software as well now directory name can be different it can be anything we have picked up as webgate so once you run this it's going to install the webgate software for you and then we are going to generate the xml file or sorry then we are going to run rh 
Um, so we'll create an XML file on the server. Uh, this we are going to do in Oracle Access Manager side. So we are going to generate, we'll copy XML file. There are pre-configured XML file that comes with RREG, Remote Registration Usability on OEM server. We'll copy that and we'll run on Oracle Access Manager side this command called oamreg.sh that you see on the screen. And then say inbound and we'll say input file, whatever the input file or the XML file which we have created where we have passed on all the parameters. And when we do that, it's going to create a output file. So the output file will be created under wherever the rreg or remote registration home. So rreg directory, they'll, in that there'll be output directory and whatever agent name or web gate name you have given, it will create a directory and generate all the artifact inside that. If you're creating this same thing from OEM console, if you're creating a web gate from an OEM console or you're, if you're updating it from OEM console, it's going to create that artifacts into a different directory under domain home. It will create a folder called output and in that output folder, it will create a subfolder called webgate agent. And in that it's going to generate artifact. So I'm going to show you both. And then we're finally going to configure or associated this webgate, which we have installed on the web server by running deploy webgate instance. We'll run this command and it will then talk to the webgate on the OEM server. And then finally, we need to update the httpd.conf. So you can either manually update that by including the webgate.conf or run this command called edit httpconf. This edit httpconf will be coming from the webgate software. So we'll say edit httpconf and then minus w is wherever the, your Oracle HTTP server or the web server instance. Hyphen, which stands for Oracle home for webgate. And then it's going to update the HTTP server. And finally, we need to copy. These are the files which get generated. obxsclient.xml, cwallet.ss, so password.xml, and the perm file, pm files. So first, obxsclient.xml is the main file where the connection detail from the web gate to OEM server will be there. cwallet.sso is a wallet file. And in our Oracle Fusion middleware training, we have SSL and keys and everything where we go deep into that. But for now, assume that wallet is a store where you have all the passwords, credentials, keys are stored. So you remember in previous lesson, I said, oh, you can set a password as well for Oracle WebGate. So those passwords and other key files will be stored in the cwallet.sso. There's a password.xml as well. So one of these will have password and, and, and those important keys. Now. I also mentioned that WebGate can make a call to the Oracle Access Manager using simple or cert mode. So that means the, the data will be encrypted between WebGate and OEM and those encryption keys or the SSL certificates will be stored in using this key and cert file. So this all we come, we copy and restart from the web server. And then once it's copied, all we do is restart the web server and test to te test integration. So, let me do a quick recap and then we'll go head on to the next lesson where we actually go into the activity guide and we do this installation on the server. So let me repeat one more time what we do. We simply, uh, so we, is, we go to the HTTP server and we install the WebGate software by going into or running run installer. Once we install the WebGate, we go to the Oracle Access Manager server, create the XML file as and prepare an XML file for inputting to our reg and we run this OAM reg which is a remote registration utility and pass on this XML file. It will generate a WebGate instance on OM server and will also generate some artifacts. Then we go to the go back to the WebGates or web server and we say deploy WebGate instance. And whatever Oracle HTTP server instance is, we connect it to the WebGate instance. And then we say edit http.com and then we copy whatever files generated on OEM server to the web server and then we restart the web server and finally we test the integration.